will sound like a dystopian film starring Kevin Costner, but today people in some parts of coastal New Zealand face the very real prospect of their world ending up underwater. So are our coastal communities doomed to drown or can we throw them a lifeline before the waves come crashing? Patone, a lovely little Wellington suburb, homes, schools, shops, and soon it could look like this. New research shows that rising sea levels will put this community underwater up to 3.5 metres by the end of the century. Sure, that sounds outrageous, but a study commissioned by Hutt City Council suggests homes could potentially be uninsurable by 2050. Buy a home there today and by the time your 30 year mortgage is all paid up, your quarter acre dream is like an underwater nightmare. Your home, basically, is worthless. All those years of saving straight down the drain. There are plans for seawalls, drainage systems and even relocating entire communities, much like Christchurch did after the quakes. Miami is dealing with this too. They've already lifted up scores of city blocks and installed dozens of flood management pumping systems. But Tony could do that if it can cover the cost like Miami. Hundreds of millions of dollars, but there are still no guarantees. My greatest worry is the next time we have a major hurricane, that people will say, I'm out of here. And suddenly you have this immense collapse where you have this billions and billions and trillions of dollars of real estate suddenly is, um, uh, is at very real risk of, of being valueless. So if fighting the tide is a losing battle, will the future rule of real estate be doomed to become location, location, flotation? Well, I can tell you our next guest knows more about this issue than anyone else in New Zealand. Please welcome climate change researcher Belinda Story. <laughs> welcome, Belinda. People living in Petonia will watch that story and they will be freaking out. What, how should they prepare for the next few years? What's your message to them tonight? Uh, well, my family have got a place on the beach in the Coromandel, so um, I understand some of those, those questions that people are asking. Um, the key thing is that the changes in property values will actually happen fairly slowly to begin with, and it's not until you get really close to the end of the time that you're able to safely live there that you have the drop in property prices. You predict. I mean, if I was in Petone, I'd be putting it on the market, would you? Uh, it'll depend, depend on why you're there. Some people want to stay in a coastal property because they're, they're, they're attached to the location, they enjoy that, and even if they know that there's a time limit on it, they would rather do that. Um, others will say, well, actually, this is an investment that I want to grow in, in value over time. Maybe I'm going to sell earlier than somebody else would. You mentioned your family in the Coromandel. There must be other parts around New Zealand that are at similar risk, are they? Anywhere in New Zealand that's low-lying, uh, we're a coastal nation and most of our cities are based around the coast. So uh, there are some places that will experience it sooner than others, but um, all places around New Zealand are likely to experience more what, storms. What's the certainty on this? Because this is, could be seen as scaremongering. I mean, the simple fact we're chatting about this on national TV yep. will likely affect house prices in Petone. Not really. Uh, it's not likely to affect those prices in, in the short term. Um, there's certainly certainty around um, what's going to happen in the next 20 years. So we know that there's going to be about 10 centimetres of sea level rise in the next 20 years. That's, that's a given, that's regardless of what we do today, because those decisions were baked in in the 1990s. So we're certain about that. Um, and so you can look at that and identify what is, how is that likely to impact your, the time you're able to stay there. And I guess for sceptics, seeing that will then convince them that the rest will follow. It could do, yes. Yep. When do you think we'll see the first insurance company saying to someone in New Zealand, we're not insuring your house, it's going to get hit by water? It's already happening. We just don't really? know where exactly. There are already locations in New Zealand that are unable to get insurance. And some people don't know that until they go to sell their house. And then they find that anyone who wants to buy their property isn't able to get insurance. But the, yeah. Do you think that most New Zealanders realise how serious this is? Because I certainly didn't. Hmm. I think people don't realise how soon it is. Yeah. People, a lot of the research talks about 2100, and, and if you're an economist like me, you kind of glaze over and like, that's way too far in the future. Mm -hmm. But things that are going to happen in the next 10 or 20 years, if you lose insurance, if you can't borrow money, those are going to start to impact your decisions today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that people don't quite understand. Your, your family has a place in the Coromandel. Are they interested in buying another one? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got very strong emotional attachment to right. that, that building. And so that's why, despite you know what I know, I don't want to sell that property either. Mm. That's something that there's a strong attachment it's to. It's scary stuff, but it is increasingly becoming a reality. Please thank Belinda Story.